Are you guys muted? I still can't hear you. Does the town have the meeting on mute? Somebody needs to unmute the mic. We cannot hear you. Please unmute the mic in the meeting room.
Does anyone at the town have control over the volume of this meeting? Nobody on the phone can hear you. It appears that Karen's not at the meeting tonight and Jenny's running the computer and I've messaged her and Bill Clevenger, but I haven't got any response to tell him to turn it on. Thank you.
than anything else. That, yeah. that if the maintenance that's being set aside is not covering just the maintenance to maintain it at a particular level. No, it's more that the income is supporting the park. Park, not just this department. Yeah, I mean, I would say both. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, we have an increase of repair, like that repair line item has been increasing every year since I've started, which was five years ago. So that's increasing each year. We are seeing more cracks and like holes. And and if you see any, like our renters are more than welcome to communicate that. I mean, I walk them, but you're more than we always replace them if it's communicated with us. Um, we do it in a way that like if a, a panel has a crack on it, we replace that panel. Because as sure. Bill is alluding to, if we were to replace every, I mean, we're talking hundreds of thousands, but sure. that's usually how we handle repairs. But I have people report holes and cracks and- um, And just for the, Budget perspective and expenditures this year. I think we spent about two thousand dollars in peer repairs this, this year. We're budgeting six thousand dollars for next year. Is there anyone online? Well, Thank you. Um, we can check Please. online, but I do have well, a letter from a citizen that I should read into the minutes. No. If you all don't we can't. Mind. We've been on this mute came for in this minutes. afternoon. Um, and it was um, emailed to me and the clerk. The name is J.D. Castleman at 641 Forest Place in Culver. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to comment on the town peer rate increase. I'm a retired fixed income full-time resident townie in Slip B29. Last spring, I was lucky to find an inexpensive tiny boat and used to lift. This past boating season was my first. It was great spending time with friends and family on the lake and in the park. The park's leadership, the employees, and park improvements are fantastic. Great job to all. I grew up on a nearby farm and money-wise closely relate to the seemingly dwindling number of full-time have-not residents rather than to the seemingly increasing number of part-time have residents. As such, the peer rate increase does present future financial concern to me. However, all that said and considered, I do see the peers and associated facilities are in need of some upgrade. Therefore, I do support the 2023 peer rental rate increase. In regard to needed peer and facility upgrades, several of my summer boat guests made cringing remarks about the primitive public restrooms. I do not blame current Culver managers and officials for the porta party problem. I lay that on the failure of our years past Culver managers and officials. Year after year, they can so to speak, has been kicked down the road, and it's just not fair that this issue has been dumped on our awesome current managers. Why do we continue to put up with these porta potties? I've discussed this with many, and I think maybe the porta potties have been there so long, people's senses have become dulled. An example at last summer's Lake Fest 2021, the stench of those porta potties and all the additional ones brought in for the event, at least on the evening I was there, it was overwhelming. Some local friends of mine seemed to have not noticed until I mentioned them they were appalled. The porta potty location, prime front and center at the highest point of the park with no screen or wall, what an eyesore. That's a location typically one might think best for a monument or something we can be proud of. I get coffee every morning right across the street and love the lake sunrise, but not the fact that the sun rises over the porta potties. It's sad and embarrassing. And when the morning pumper truck comes, sometimes every morning in the busy summer, no one wants to be around that. The truck pump is so loud you can literally hear it for blocks. I understand the installation of a permanent public facility presents cost, maintenance, security, and other challenges. I know there have been past, there have been in the past, and there are current efforts to deal with the issue. Other local parks and towns seem to have found ways to deal with this issue of a permanent facility. I find that an encouraging sign that we in Culver can do the same. If any community input or volunteer position is available to assist in addressing the porta potty issue, I would gladly volunteer my time and ideas. Thank you, Katie Cassman. Yeah, Sally, I'm not sure if anyone online, if you could unmute yourself if you have public input. We have little idea what you're talking about. We've been muted for the last 20 minutes. Sound like it. Here's to be none. Is there any more public input in? Yes. I'm John Helfrey, 7th Royal Academy Road. Uh, yeah, I, I support the increase. I appreciate the fact that there hasn't been one for five years. Uh, I'm looking at the budget and you got um, 
estimated in income from the uh, park at 285,000. You got a total of in expenses of 378,000, which leaves a $92,600 shortfall. Uh, my question would be, you got 140,700 in services and charges. I'm not sure what that is. I'm sure personal services are salaries and uh, manpower. And then you got capital outlays, that's probably for some of the building situation. Uh, but if this this increase uh, is going to amount to about $35,000 in additional income from what the peers bring in, are we still going to have another shortfall? Are we going to be looking at this next year? Another increase? And, and especially if you're just going to piecemeal the peers, if you're not going to new peers and just replace some decking and some pipes. Are we going to be faced with this again in two years or a year? As we went through the budget process, we talked about concern about capital expenditures on the peers going down the road because we don't have a reserve necessarily set aside for those peer replacements. And we talked about studying that issue uh, this year as we as we go into it um, to figure out what we need to do, uh, what would be a reasonable reserve for those peer replacements anticipate will end up being necessary in the future. One of the things to note about that particular budget, John, that I know Karen would want to comment on, we had originally budgeted last year for the stellar, regional stellar park project that's going on in the West End. Well, that project got started later than we wanted to start it, so Karen included it in this year's budget as well. So technically, part will probably come out of this year's and part next year. So there, there may not be a 30 to 60, like somewhere within that range. Uh, we're still using part of this year's budget, but she wanted to make sure we didn't have to do a special appropriation. So it, even though it looks like there's potential for a shortfall, part of it was budgeted for this year. So we're, we're technically gonna take it out of what's left over from this year. Uh, so it's not as big a shortfall as it looks. And the um, the other project that got budgeted is redoing the parking lot because it's sort of the last piece. You know, we've kind of renovated from one end of the park to the other, and that'll probably be our last major capital improvement for quite a while in the park because from the beach lodge, it, literally everything's been redone once that west park is taken care of. So um, the shortfall isn't really as much as it looks like on paper once we, it depends on how much they get done this year. Um, otherwise we end up encumbering or we'd have to do a special appropriation next year if we hadn't put it in the budget. Uh, and so, and Amber had enough in her um, park general fund to cover this new capital project with the park. Sense. Karen would explain it a little more eloquently to me, but and if she want me to respond to that. <laughs> Thank you. If there aren't any more questions, we need to close the hearing. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 First reading, next on the agenda is the first reading. 2022 006. I would make a motion and that we approve one first reading 2022 006. I think the run the ordinance itself needs to be revised. That would be my motion. I have a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Motion to suspend the rules on for second reading, please. By the ordinance 2020 006. Second that. Motion second. 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 You just want to suspend the rules for second pass? Is that? That's what. That's second or second and third. Move to. Suspend the rules 
pass ordinance 2020-006 on third read. Second. Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, town manager report. So right, right, yeah. <laughs> right. All right. Mm -hmm. um, first thing I wanted to ask you that's not in the report. Uh, as you know, um, uh, Chuck DeWitt has resigned, so I wanted to have the council officially accept that resignation. Um, I have a signature on a letter from him, so I thought we should do that. And then I, I'm not sure, Jim, but right now I'm taking on those duties. Does the council need to authorize me to serve as a building commissioner until such time? So the when there, there was a motion for you to serve in the interim basis. The move that we accept the resignation, resignation of the building commissioner. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And in the interim, we authorize the town manager to fill the roles and responsibilities of that position. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> you want us to authorize you to, to uh, advertise for? for um, I want to hold on to at least for the next meeting because I've asked um, the county and I, I've met with the county uh, last Friday and we've had a discussion and, and Ty is going to do some homework on his end and potentially give us a proposal for how they can step in and help out. I don't know what that will look like enough to. So yeah. in the interim, are we asking them to do anything that we need to right here? Or? No, okay. um, they have been extraordinarily helpful though to me okay. in the last three days. Uh, so I really appreciate that. If you do need inspection, just call the county that I yeah. required it. Um, under the utility street department, I sent you guys a quote for our meters. Um, these have a 36 week lead time. It will take that long to get them. Um, so we would like to uh, have you approve the quote for 9,551 from EJP. I move that we accept the quote of $9,551 for EJP meters. I'll second. I'll second. That just with the footnote that that is the only provider of the meters, which is why there's only one vote. Yeah, just adds. We do our sewer meetings. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, Bob and I are discussing um, advertising for that position for the utility department. And then I think we mentioned to you guys that the part-time employee that um, left that we'd like to replace with a full-time employee, Karen and Bob, we're gonna do some research on affordability of that. Um, so Bob would like for us to maybe have an executive session to discuss personnel. Uh, and I wondered if you all would be willing to schedule that in the next week or two, I'm thinking, or, we can even do as early as Friday if you want to do another like two o'clock or three o'clock on Friday during business hours yeah, when Bob's here. I didn't know if you were teaching that bill. I am teaching on Friday. Uh, and we can always do it like okay. next week on Tuesday after business hours if you prefer. The school gets out of it. Mm -hmm. The school get out at two something on Fridays or three. What time are you suggesting? Three would be fine. Three, 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 three works. Three o'clock Friday. Yeah, three o'clock. Okay, then I'll yeah. I'll get that advertised. Um, Thank you. Can I suggest it be for the broader scope of personnel issue? That's the part of Yes. Yes. We can do that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks. 
Uh, moving on, there's no change on the two trail projects. So I'm going to move down to the Midwestern proposal. This is the project in the north end of town that took us so long to get the easement worked out. Um, so Bob touched base with uh, Mark Sullivan, and you guys had already approved the proposal from Midwestern to do this engineering on this project. The fees have gone up slightly since the year has passed. So um, I've outlined in your town manager report here uh, what that total is. It was prior to uh, last year, it was 42,000 something. Um, it's 48,000 and Bob wants to get that started now that we have the easement uh, agreement because we'd like to get that put in before the trail project. Um, and we need to get the, this is just for engineering. Um, and this is the project that Karen is suggesting we use the ARPA funding for. Um, so construction would be covered after it would go out to bid and uh, Midwestern would help us with that. But the estimate, um, your original estimate from the, had the construction cost in there as well. But this is just to pay for engineering to start with. I think that we approved the proposal from the engineering for design um, fees and for um, the assistance with reviewing the, um, the proposals, the, the bids, and then also for construction management supervision for the amount of not to exceed $48,000. So, okay, go ahead, Bill. Next to seven. I have a motion and a second law in favor. Aye, aye, aye. aye. Okay. Uh, peerless proposal. Um, that easement language is now with the attorney at CMD. He is getting in touch with item to work out that addition. As you recall, we had this easement worked out based on items language, and then they threw us a curveball and asked us to add a paragraph. Uh, that should be done soon. Um, BS Engineering, that's the community cost and grant application. We're still waiting to hear on that. So I'll move down to the Park Crossroads Stellar Project and the Beach Drainage. Both of those projects are Thomas excavating. Um, as you know, Thomas was the low bidder for the Stellar Project. They wanted to do both of these at the same time. They done work now on the drainage project. They've moved over to the park and they will be getting on uh, more removal there. Right now they've only taken out, I think, the wayfinding sign and some bushes and such kind of around that western end. Um, but we we are expecting them to start taking out the playground equipment anytime. Mm -hmm. Question on that project. I don't know if we're, you were Amber and Bob, but um, the the walkway there at the main entrance to the beach lodge now have been uh, there's a the curb has been built up to create a basically a way to funnel the, mm -hmm. the um, through the water that runs down Lake Shore Drive and, um, and makes a turn there and runs into the beach lodge. Um, just because that is potential trip hazard, could I suggest that we either paint that yellow or orange or do something to make it more identifiable? Um, I mean, there's a one cutaway now where that near the handicap access spot. Um, so there is a, you don't have to necessarily step over that, that eight or 10 inch curve, but I would suggest we do some type of identification of that because I think it's a potential trip are, are you talking about the drain that pops out on the hill? Not, or the, no, not the drain, the I'm talking about curve. the curve, the curve that actually runs along um, and took out the curb cut out for the walkway. Yeah. By the. Um, I mean, you want me to paint? The curve yellow, like all, like yeah, they probably. Are you well, saying just because people are used to walking there? They're or? used to walking there, and it's also a high level. A lot of people, I noticed. There's yeah. another entrance. There's the one where the handicap parking is. I know, yeah, but okay. I noticed with the Yupu crowd that was there the other day. Yeah. Um, there was some, and also after the uh, the plein air event, and a number of people. Yeah, I mean, we can paint it. I think it's just a matter of habit. Like, people are going to start using but we can paint it. Yeah, yeah. just yeah, I yeah. identify it in some way. Yeah. Bob will want to paint it whatever color for parking because yellow is usually don't park here on the intersection. And I can have it. I mean, we're redoing that whole parking lot and they're going to remark and we're going to redesign it. We can just do it when we redesign that's, that's all fine. the markings. Yep. Okay. 
and I think all almost all of that area along there is no parking anyway. I think. Yeah, and it Sorry. and like it all like needs completely yeah. remarked. Okay, thank you. Um. Okay. Smaller park. on. Sorry, I'm gonna find my place so I think I wrote you a book this time. Um. Comprehensive plan. The uh, MACOG was back for our cross stakeholder meeting, and that work is continuing. This week, we focused on uh, department heads had uh, a SWOT analysis activity at the Beach Lodge. We had some lunch over there, and all the department heads came and contributed to that. Um, and then we met with the Culver Steering Committee afterwards, the Crossroads Culver team, and we've now established the vision mission statement based on some of the SWAT work done by the stakeholder groups. Uh, so that's continuing to come along. Uh, MACOG has been fantastic to work with. Um, the community crossings grant that we did receive for this year, that paving is almost done. Bob said striping was going on today. Uh, they're going to come back and do ADA approaches, topsoil, and barricade removal probably tomorrow if the weather's good. So we should be wrapping up that paving project from that grant. Um, I have a special event permit from Knights of Columbus. Um, they pick either uh, a parent weekend of, at the academy or a rain date. So they, that's why there's two dates on your town manager report of 10-8 or 10-15. They do their candy drive, and it's at the major intersections, State Road 17 and 10, Lakeshore and Academy, and downtown Jefferson Street in Maine. So we're looking to get approval for that. I moved we approve the Knights of Columbus uh, on October 8th, 22, or October 15th, 22, pending weather. Interesting. Um, favor. I, 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 I'm going to recuse myself from a parishioner of St. Barrett's. So. We still have to people to have to get All right, thanks, George. Um, I'm going to go down to uh, Marshall County Crossroads Ready Grant. Uh, I think I let you guys know on email mm -hmm. we got 1.3 million. <laughs> They've already reached out and done some PR work with us, um, and then they are going to have a meeting on how to get started on this project. Um, Bill Giffen, Sally as chair of CRC, myself and Bob Porter will be meeting with Mr. Collins and his team this coming Friday. So we can start talking housing projects. Uh, and Jim, remind me, I have to send you a memo regarding this. So I don't want to forget. Uh, and that's uh, it for now. And hopefully the department heads will let you know if I miss something. <laughs> it's been a busy week. It's Thank only you. Tuesday. Thank you. <laughs> Another congratulations on all your work for the ready grant. Yep. Department head reports. Uh, is Jeff online for you know. I do not think so. And last so many times. Jeff, are you online? Yeah, I didn't think he was attending. And I is we in here. I don't know that we will be selling things to any of the people for the media, unfortunately. Terry, do you have anything for Just one thing, uh, just for your information, the Scott Air Packs and Bottles that you approved me to sell a while back, we sold them this weekend to Grass Creek Fire Department. Yeah. Just an informational thing besides that, nothing else, thank you. Grass Creek, I know where it's at. Well rain, used there. Yeah, yeah. Um, rain is not online. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, just as Jay mentioned, uh, the drainage project is done. We're ready to go for the part of the ground renovation project. I sent a message like we started, um, so hopefully it'll, it'll be this week or next. So any day now, it's all fenced off and ready to go. So I kind of just see them go one day and then they zoom. So um, the completion won't occur until the spring or early summer of 2023. Um, other than that, uh, I think since we last met, we've done the park outdoor night. We had a really good turnout. I think we had about, the count we had was around 125 people. Um, really good turnout. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, just finished hosting uh, the Culver Paint Out. And then um, we'll be, the park department will be contributing an outdoor movie at Fall Fest. Um, not this weekend, but the next. So. Just I think to you and to Aaron, and the, um, on the plain air event, I think that's a great event. I think it's all great yeah. event putting it together. I think that was a, amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's all good. Okay. Bob is online, so. Okay, Bob. I have nothing for you unless you have something for me. Utilities. He's on the so. Yeah. Are you there, Bob? I'm here. Well, he's trying to talk. I have nothing for you unless you have something for me. <laughs> happening, but I'm having technical issues tonight because, like, there were people putting stuff in the chat that they couldn't hear, and it's not, it wasn't showing up on my end. Go ahead and call in. Yeah, we can do that. Bob, if you have anything, call my phone or call Rich West. I have nothing. He's trying to unmute himself again. <laughs> I don't think he's on, but I think I covered about the two quotes and the uh, executive session schedule, so I think we're okay. Oh, so he can't get in. We'll move on, and if, if somehow he calls in, then we can go back to it. Yeah, sometimes the people who come in, not via the link, but come in on the phone, for yeah. some reason, we sometimes have audio problems with that. Okay. Is there anyone from the plan commission? Um, no, but plan commission at their next meeting, they will have a couple of ordinance changes that we will be publishing a public hearing on. They're really minor changes. For example, right now our ordinance requires that we publish in the Culver Citizen and since it only right. publishes twice a month now, we want to change that to um, a local newspaper like the Pilot News. Uh, so it's not a requirement to be the citizen because sometimes meeting that deadline puts us a month behind. So, um, right. And Marty just put in the chat that he could hear Bob. So the other people on the call could hear Bob. We just couldn't hear Bob and he had nothing more for us. Okay. Uh, and then uh, BCA does have a case coming up at their next meeting that I will publish for tomorrow. So um, both those groups have been pretty active. Mm. All right. And the Redevelopment Commission uh, met when we discussed the uh, problem with the lights, or the problem that there is light, the lights aren't burning on one block. Um, unfortunately, CRC can't pay for uh, upkeep of that type of we pay to have them installed as a grant, but we can't maintain, uh, pay for the main. So I think that they can take that to yeah. uh, visitor center. Visitor center. Main Street. Visitor. Yeah. Yeah, it came up at visitor center and they suggested chamber, so I'll suggest it to the chamber as well. Yeah. All and right. I'm meeting with the new director of the chamber next week, so I'll bring it up there. Okay, that'd be great. And now uh, the next meeting is on uh, October 17th at 5 15 p.m. Is there anyone from Tree Commission? 
Mr. Stallings. Yes, uh, we have uh, we identified earlier in the summer 17 trees that needed to come down. Uh, we have taken 13 of them out. Uh, the other four uh, will be done in the next couple of weeks. And uh, last week we went to Dogwood Hills Tree Farm and purchased uh, 30 new trees of various species. And those will be planted the last weekend in October. Very good. Great. Um, I have a uh, next item on the agenda is the first report. She's not here. Yeah, I have yeah. her report. Uh, basically, she just has claims in excess of 2,500. I'll go ahead and the whole list is here, but I'll go ahead and list the ones that you have to approve. Uh, these are previously approved Frick services. That's for the salt. That was $20,550. Also, best equipment, which is the leaf truck. That was $184,900.43. Uh, previously approved also was a contract with MACOG. That's for the comp plan work. They've submitted an invoice for $3,614.16. And then under operations and contractual work, we have NIPSCO and the AIM Medical Trust. NIPSCO is $3,437.40. AIM Medical Trust is $27,684.47. That's for health insurance. Then under payroll, we have the Internal Revenue Service and the INPRS and PERF. Um, Internal Revenue Service is $11,357.44. PERP is $5,793.81. And under redevelopment, we have the trail projects and the park improvement project, which is Shannon McLeod. Um, the two trail projects are Chorter uh, for $2,752.03 and $3,581.83. And then Shannon McLeod's priority project resources is $25,000. Is that a motion to approve claims over 2,500? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that's, uh, I believe, all she had. So. Okay, thank you. Report. Uh, the uh, we filed the brief uh, in response to the uh, as part of the plan commission uh, request for judicial review last Friday. Oral argument is October fourth at nine a.m. in the Marshall Circuit Court. Uh, it is open to the public. Uh, probably not going to be a very lengthy kind of thing because no new evidence is. Can be presented. It's just an argument on the record. The petitioners argued that uh, the, the application was to try and avoid uh, other zoning classifications and development standards and you know, kind of get around maybe uh, the other setback requirements. Uh, we responded that there were valid reasons for the PUD application uh, and that the Planning Commission followed the zoning ordinance, followed all the procedures, gave everybody an opportunity, and that they uh, made their determinations after following the review considerations that are part of the zoning ordinance. So we'll see what the judge has to say about all of that. And I sent all of you this afternoon a copy of that brief, so I have a chance to read it. You expect the on the brief. Do you expect there will be a, a decision? At the um, point? I, I don't know that there will be a decision. Judge Palmer, I know, has been on vacation. I don't know if you can tell that. Um, so I don't know. You know, and of course, we just filed Friday. He's got two briefs to read. Um, it's coming up next Tuesday. And I don't know uh, how long he's been back. Or even, I'm not even sure if he's been back yet or he is back yet. So I don't know whether he'll have a lot of time to review that ahead of time. Uh, typically, he would not make a decision on Tuesday. Um, he may have some comments that might tip us off to what he's thinking, um, but probably no decision until sometime after he takes it under advisement and then issues a written decision. And 
he's been really pretty good about getting things out. For some so hopefully it'll respond. And yeah, after that's all I have. Thank you. I hope that he gets rested up. Uh, is there anyone here for a or online for a utility shut off or an ordinance violation? Hearing none, we'll go to the citizen input. Anyone have any citizen input? Terry. Just got a couple of small things to kind of fell in my category, but not a, it's an FYI, but the Academy, the Academy Water Tower was down all summer long. Uh, they just contacted me last week. They're up and running, which is really good for everybody even us. And, uh, also the uh, New press box at the academy is going to be, I think it's this Friday, is going to be at a 100%. So they'll have full of just some campus news and things in the area. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other citizen input? Anyone online have citizen input? Doesn't look like I'm getting anything in the chat room either, so okay. I think we're okay. Seeing none, hearing none, we will move on to council issues. Rich, do you have any? Nothing. Bill? I have a couple of things. Um, last Thursday, uh, the county and state building board met, and we did, uh, dealt with Mr. Bozeman. Unfortunately, Mr. Boatsman did not appear in person, but uh, first item that uh, took place was that uh, the county has ordered the demolition of the uh, building that's burned. Um, so that will probably go to the next meeting for bids. But a little interesting thing happened. Um, judge issued uh, Mr. Boatsman is been refusing to let the building inspector in to the, I call it the gray building at uh, 600. And uh, the judge issued a warrant for him to admit the building inspector. So I haven't heard anything back as far as the reporter. Have you heard anything? No. So those are the two things that we'll move along on those. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nothing. You already spoke. <laughs> I am done. <laughs> I'm fried. I don't know what's Jenny, <laughs> I got a lot already, so I'm sure she has nothing to add. I move um, we adjourn the clinic. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well done, Madam Chair. <laughs>